Welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to the ancillary component of the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Before you, we have the stainless steel and lifetime Craftsman ratchets. We're going to do a teardown on just one set. They're exactly the same in terms of how they work. I noticed while I was working on the lifetimes, there's a tiny minor variation on the Lifetime Ratchet's Paul, but these things are pretty rare, <laughs> and I'm going to open them as few times as I have to. <laughs> the snap ring philosophy on these is different than, say, this guy. You have what's called an internal snap ring that you compress inward with this, whereas the stainless and lifetimes they have what's called an external snap ring so what you do is it's right there is instead of compressing it you pull outward these are a little flimsy in terms of their strength so you have to be a little ginger with them so risking the snap ring on the lifetime really isn't worth it if you are curious uh, go ahead and tear your lifetime down yourself. <laughs> it's not worth it for me. And yeah, I know I could get an external snap ring actually pretty easily, but uh, I don't know. I've already created enough headaches for myself doing this series as it is. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just do the product numbers real, real quick. So we'll do stainless quarter inch. This one is, let's zoom in a little bit farther. Is 43761. We're not getting really good focus here, camera. What the hell? We've got 43762 for 3/8 in stainless. We're just going to go ahead and do the rundown on the product numbers. We got 43763 for half inch stainless. We'll go to lifetime half inch. 43766. Oh. 43765 for 3 8 lifetime. And then we've got for quarter inch lifetime, we got 43764. The repair kits for these work interchangeably. You know, you can use the quarter inch stainless designated repair kit on the lifetime it does not matter be forewarned that the kit does not contain the Paul spring or bearing on these so if you break your your selector switch off or damage the Paul or whatever you're kind of screwed you're gonna have to find a donor ratchet to get parts off of unfortunately or you can fashion something or whatever but so we'll just get these guys for simplicity's sake out of the way because it's the same teardown procedure for both. We'll take the stainless quarter inch and three eighths, put them over there. We'll grab our table protecting buffer. <laughs> All right, so this can be a bit of a pain in the ass to repair. Uh, what has worked for me, and you're more than welcome to use whatever procedure you want, is I've used the smallest Craftsman snap ring pliers. And the reason why I said in my recommend, recommended tools video for this part of the series that I recommend you use the pliers that are reversible like this, because look, I can go outward and inward with just one tool with the flick of a switch. I'd recommend using the smaller one because it's a little bit better control, it's a little less aggressive in terms of how how much power it puts on that external snap ring. They can bend pretty easy. So we're not going to be able to get away with going in here, putting this on here and spreading it to its maximum, pulling it off and then expecting that snap ring to survive. Like I said, they're a little flimsy. So 
we will want to be as careful as we can realistically. Actually, let me slide it this way a little bit. Okay, well here we go. We're going to be ratchet surgeons. So what I'm my strategy involves is getting in here, applying some some spreading force on this snap ring and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with my probe and I'm going to gently nurse it out and around because if you look, we'll go ahead and take a look, there's a ridge right here. We want to do is we going to get that snap ring nestled partially on this ridge and then I can walk it off. That way it won't spread the snap ring to its maximum point. <laughs> and thereby permanently alter it because uh, on the ratchets that I had received as donations that were the stainless steel ones for example I'm like oh, I'll just spread that snap ring no big deal and yeah it they're all defaced and that kind of thing so don't be like me <laughs> and do that so what I'll go ahead and do is we'll have the smallest adapter for the snap ring I'll go ahead and apply some force. You can see that if we zoom in a little bit more, you should see it to start to spread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to walk it up. Come on, little buddy. Come on. Shoot. We'll try it again. Come on. All unscripted, guys. <laughs> there we go. Come on. Shit. I'm not a, I don't claim to be an expert. I'm just sharing my experience with you in hopes that if you have these ratchets and you want to do maintenance on them, which I would recommend that you do. Um, damn it. Because nine times out of ten out of all the ones that I've had that were like these, out of all these stainless ratchets, they almost all come with no lubrication. Oh. Why aren't you working today, strategy? Hmm. Well, shoot. We're just getting creamed right now. There we go. So we got her to go. There. So we didn't deface the, the ring too much as far as spreading it out. So that's good. So what next? Well, there is hardly anything holding this together. If you've watched the history video of this particular ratchet, all this is is a sandwich adapter that holds all of the guts together. The pawl is held in by place by this, re this retention plate slash pseudo thumb wheel that realistically isn't very effective. I mean, <laughs> doesn't really work very well. So, we'll go ahead and all you gotta do is simply push down, and that's it. And pull the plate. You can see that I have a very generous amount of lubrication on here. One bit of advice that I can offer you if I didn't offer it on the standard history video is if you don't see this patent number right here, these are original to the ratchets, okay? There are kits that were later produced in the, in the twilight years of this ratchet that had nothing on it. It was just a blank plate. But if you bought it off the rack or had a repair kit from the earlier days, it will have the patent number on it. So if it doesn't, yours has been warranted. And if that matters to you, if you're a collector, you, you, might, 
I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's been fixed, so you might want to find a repair kit or a donor ratchet or whatever, but... So, looking at this further, it's real basic. So we have a, a little bit of a more aggressive tooth profile than, say, on this guy right here. The tooth profile is a little gentler than it is on the 36 tooth stainless steel slash lifetime ratchet. The ejection mechanism is very reminiscent of the very first quick release back in 1967. So there's that. There's your snap ring. And here's how you do the pawl. You just take your finger and you just gently put it in the neutral position, right in the middle, and you push out. If you try it when it's left or right, it's just going to fling out. And then we've got our bearing. And we have the spring. Let's go ahead and get that guy out of here. This is a heck of a lot easier to do when I have this directly in front of me. <laughs> rather than off to the side. So let's do an inventory. So we've got Paul slash selector, ball and spring. We got snap ring, retention plate or sandwich plate and gear. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Paul since this is kind of an oddball piece. So there's that two tooth action that we were talking about in the history aspect. And with the high profile, the 36 teeth, and this two tooth engagement, uh, it is my opinion that this is the reason why this is a little less graceful than the teardropped ratchet, whether it's the polished one or the standard one. They're both the fourth generation mechanism. So I'm of that opinion. And then here's where the ball sits the bearing sits when you select so you can see that this one's had some some use before and depending upon what kind of lubrication you use it may or may not degenerate the paint that's applied to this so be careful in what you select you're going to want to use something that's non-corrosive the stainless steel ratchet should be able to survive if you use a corrosive lubricant but <laughs> These are pretty damn expensive, so I wouldn't recommend that, just in case. But yeah, you can see, that's all this is. It's just a board out space with a hole for the spring and the ball. So let's get this back together. It's not as bad as it seems. It can be a little bit of a challenge. So, we're going to utilize the same strategy that we have with the fourth generation. ratchets, the ones that use the fourth generation mechanism. We're going to go ahead and get that spring in there. We're going to utilize paper clip tool <laughs> and we're going to get some lube on there. A nice handsome helping. I'm going to plop that on the gear there, or I should say the bearing. And I've had mixed success with this. So what you're going to want to do is the strategy is, is that as you, um, you want to do it from the back side. So as you depress the bearing, you're going to walk out your little handy dandy tool as you insert this piece forward because it only goes in this direction. So... I suppose you could flip it to the other side, but if you do that, then you're going to lose your profile. You get about a three degree angle there. Oh, well, it's up to you, I guess. It's your ratchet. Okay. Let's see what we can do here to get this bearing to stick. Okay. So what I've done in the past is I lay it on its side, I depress down, and launch the bearing out. Nice. Get a little bit more 
lube on my handy dandy little tool. Any excess lube can be wiped off later so it's not the end of the world. And in fact, these ratchets need all the lube they can get, so be, be generous. There we go. So we'll go ahead and depress down. Okay, or not. Oh, you know what I think my problem is? is I think I've got this bearing backwards this spring because this spring is worn to a particular direction I'll try switching it around it might make it easier well, perhaps not we'll try it anyway though let's see what we can get okay it's a little bit lower not by much okay let's go ahead and rock and roll Okay, we're going to get that bearing in position. This is one of the more difficult ratchets to fix. And if I had the actual tool, I'm sure this would be a lot faster. But I don't. So we're going to go with what we've got. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Bearing, you're just a little shyster today, aren't you? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Pushed out the bearing. Nice. Damn it. Oh, we bent the spring. That's no bueno. Hmm. I'll use my handy dandy little pliers here. See if we can't bend that back into position. Nice. We're getting murdered here, guys. <laughs> All right. We're back in, back at it. Nobody ever said I was a professional. Okay. There we go. Hooray! We did it! <laughs> what a pain in the ass. Whilst we're having good luck, we'll just go ahead and quickly reassemble this thing. You bastard. <laughs> uh oh, I'm running out of power on my camera. So going in reverse is a little bit easier. In fact, I've been able to get away with just walking with my thumb. Yep. There. And there that is. Stainless steel ratchet. Reassembled. Sorry for the, the snafu that I had there. But you get the idea. Uh, you have to have a little bit of patience with this. If you're going to try and do this in a vice you're going to want something that's going to protect the surface because this mars easy. So be careful with that. So there we have it. The teardown of the Craftsman Lifetime and Stainless Steel Ratchets. A thorn in everyone's backside. <laughs> they didn't work that great. And <laughs> they're somewhat difficult to put back together. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you find this helpful. If you have these weird ratchets, uh, be careful. They are fairly expensive. So, relative to other crafts and ratchets, so be careful when you're doing this. Take your time.